and welcome to See You in the Kitchen. Each week, we invite a special guest from Cameron's faculty to cook up his or her favorite dish. This week's guest is originally from Zimbabwe, but he got his PhD at Bowling Green State University in Ohio. He is married with two children, and he loves soccer. In fact, he is the advisor for Cameron's soccer club here on campus. His name is Dr. Maxwell Quindeb. Hello, thank you for coming today. Thank you for inviting me. Before we begin cooking, I would like to ask you, what is it like growing up in Zimbabwe? Um, Zimbabwe is uh, in Africa, and um, in terms of uh, growing up uh, in Zimbabwe, it was fun. It was fun? <laughs> How did you end up here at Cameron University? Um, to cut the long story short, this was the one of the places where I was invited, and I took up the offer, and the climate sort of reminded me of Zimbabwe. Tell us about some of the courses that you teach here on campus. I teach uh, sociology related classes and I teach uh, demography as well. What is demography? Demography is um, the science of population and so we try to understand changes in population structures and composition so sometimes we get into the mathematical stuff but also theoretical stuff. If you could say one thing about learning sociology at Cameron, what would you say? I would say it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Before we start cooking, what recipe did you choose today? I chose um, a traditional beef stew, and this is my own version of it, and most people have their own version in Zimbabwe, so this is the version I chose. Why did you choose this version of beef stew? It's one of the uh, things I cook at home, and the only thing that my kids eat, so that's <laughs> why I chose it. Your kids like the stew? Yes. So what are some of the ingredients in this beef stew? We use the beef stew, and then we use um, either tomato sauce or a tomato. We also use an onion. And then for flavoring, you can use um, any seasoning salt, or you could use um, beef stew crock pot powder. Well, I've actually never cut an onion. So why don't you show me and our viewers how to cut an onion to put in the stew? OK. This is, this is different from what I've seen done on TV. Okay. <laughs> but I'll cut it in my own original way. <laughs> okay. I'll take the back off first. OK. And then get the, the yucky parts off. So the part on the outside, we just throw away. Yeah, you okay. just throw away that part. I cut it in half. Okay. I'm going to use this knife. Okay. What kind of knife is this, do you know? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a sharp one. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then I cut sideways and then into little pieces. Okay. How small do the pieces need to be for the soup? At least less than half an inch. Okay. Do your kids like onions? I know a lot of little kids don't like onions. Actually, when you cook it well, all you get is the flavor. You won't okay. see the onions, and that's why I guess they eat it because they can't see the onions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the pieces are pretty small. Do your kids ever help you cook the food? Actually, they only help me when it comes to prepare uh, the prepared stuff like cookies that you just bagged. Those are the easy kinds. Okay. Is, yeah. <laughs> How old are they? Um, five and two. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> what are their names? Um, the boy is five, his name is Madiro, and the girl is two, her name is Maita. Okay. Do we want to get a shot of this to show everybody, like, what the onions look like when they're done? And then I guess we wipe our hands off so we don't cry. Okay, um, do you want to move over here and kind of let's show everybody what the finished product looks like and talk about that a little bit? Okay. So is this dish from Zimbabwe? Is it a national dish? I, it is a national dish. Usually people save it with sadza, which is a product made out of cornmeal or you can serve it with rice. As I say, this is my own variant of it because I've added in more expensive things like mushrooms, which ordinarily you wouldn't get. So those are little things that I've just added to make it my own uh, style. Do you eat it often at home? Yes, I do eat it often. Is it pretty easy to prepare? About how long does it take? It's easy to prepare. It takes about 30 minutes. 
so it's pretty easy. And you can use either tomato sauce, like tomato paste, or you can use an actual tomato. Yes, you can use uh, an actual tomato and then you'd have to cut it up into, again, the small sizes like the onion. Or if you don't want to cut up the tomato, you just use the paste. And also with the onion, if you don't want to cry, you can use frozen onions and that's what I use and you don't have to cut it. Does it taste as good with the frozen? Yeah, it tastes just as good because all, all you're putting in is the flavor of the onion and not really the texture because sometimes people like the texture of the onion in there but once you've prepared it so well everything is all nice and brown you won't be able to see the onions. Now I know that there is steak in this it's like a steak stew. Do you um, have a certain kind of steak that you need to buy like does it need to be t-bone or does it matter? No usually it's just um, regular steak and you cube it sometimes you even get the one that's already cubed so that's easy to prepare. Do you marinate the steak first? No. Okay. So let's try it. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll serve you. You're nice enough to bring it. <laughs> we'll just get a little. And then do we want to show everybody kind of what it looks like when it's done? All right, so you are ready to try it? Yes. Although you have it all the time, so. <laughs> I love mushrooms. Not bad. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love mushrooms. They're my favorite food. Well, maybe not, but they're good. <laughs> I love We would like to thank Dr. Quinda for bringing us his rendition of beef stew. That's all the time we have today for See You in the Kitchen. If you're considering colleges, please consider Cameron University. It's a great place to be. I'm Jory Palmer. See you next time. <laughs>